just a quick foray into the world of uh, binoculars and telescopes. First off, if you've purchased um, an older pair of binoculars, um, these ones here, which I'm just taking apart to show you, were 16 by 50s fully coated optics, and I found that the actual eyepieces um, here's here's one of the eyepieces here were incredibly cloudy, probably covered in some sort of growth, and also that the lens lenses, the objective lenses, I mean these have been cleaned now, were also similar, similarly very dirty inside, and the prisms were so much light was being lost off the prisms you're probably losing about 40% of the light that's coming through you can lose 5% through each prism so basically you've got no choice but to take these apart and because they're 16 by 50 I've, I'll show you I've set up another means of um, stabilizing them to use them first off remove the little cover which is here on the front of them that's a little this is a little cover that came on there. Now, in, in, in my case I found this just screws off, okay? So the first tool I used was one of these little dual screwdrivers. You should get a set of these. These are very reasonably priced. You get a full set of them, so that was the Phillips head one. You'll find inside them sometimes there's a flat screw. Uh, this one had a, a takes a flat screw and it of course rested inside the barrel and on the end of it is another uh, screw head. This one's flat, so you will need two screwdrivers to get them out. So basically one flat screwdriver inside the um, center piece of the binoculars, you know, the, the part the, which is, they split over, another side on the other angle of that, and you'll have to turn them against each other. First of all, this orange screwdriver here, I undid that one, but I couldn't get this the eyepiece assembly off until I'd also anchored it with another screwdriver, and so it's a bit fiddly. But once you've uh, freed it from the, the eyepiece assembly, you're able to get this part of the eyepiece. Eyepiece cups, right? One side you'll find will be easy to get off because they're just they just it's just screws off, okay? So that one comes off as a screw. But the other side, you will not be able to get this one off. I mean, this one's off now without using a very small uh, flathead uh, dual screwdriver. So. This one here has got a, a tiny, tiny flat head to it, and you'll find that on the side of these, of this one here, there will, there are a little, uh, there's a little hole. You can see one of them there, and you need to put your little dual screwdriver in there. There may well be more than one of these little holes. I, mine had two on, I believe. And then you need, so once they're undone, then this this other eyepiece um, cup will will I. Then of course you can take your eyepieces out. Uh, as you can see, I've, I've actually put some string around mine to hold them because I've shown you the disassembly, basically, and they come out. Um, you will find, with many eyepieces, and this is what I did with mine, that if you look at, on the other side, and this one here has got a ring, uh, like a split sort of ring that will screw out. Don't scratch your lens, be very careful, but that will unscrew. I can just about move that with my fingers and that should unscrew. And that's a three-piece assembly. They can be taken out individually and cleaned. Now what I recommended, you can either use lens cloth cleaning pads or something like anti-fog glass cleaner, but be, use, you know, check your instructions because basically this one, you, you only leave it on for a couple of minutes and you can't leave it on any longer because it will just fog up. Once you've removed the, um, the, this eyepiece adjusting uh, assembly here for focusing, uh, you'll be left with the two eyepiece holders here these do screw off okay so the this does screw off here I've just loosened everything anyway just to show you anyway that screws off take that off first and then I've actually well, I have removed this but this was the plate that was covering um, the prisms and you'll find you've got to do it on the other side as well of course and you'll find that the prism is held in most cases by a, bar, a curved bar with a small Phillips head so you need a, one of your jaw screwdriver to gently remove this Phillips head top and then you can get at your prisms. These prisms I've already cleaned them, removed them. What you should do is mark this side of the prism here with a pencil so you know how it goes in and you'll find they, they sit very very precisely. Some of them have special like bits of sort of glue putty like um, 
that's set in, in like glue that hold them and you'll have to gently wiggle them out and you need to then clean them you can use things like kitchen towel with your glass cleaner um, um, give it a good old clean and then gently wipe each surface so the idea is you want the optical path which is through these binoculars to be as you know as clean as possible and the same the front lens the front lens uh, objective will of course screw out and, that, and then you can get uh, into the actual assembly here in the, in the my in the example of my binoculars you can see that there's two prisms housed inside um, I personally have remo I removed this prism here with these are the dirtiest prisms this on this side um, and the other one on on this side here as well okay together with the eyepieces and disassembled the eyepieces and disassembled and got these for the second prisms out for the first prism you can remove this okay so basically all I did is if I just put this back on again this is the housing that covered that other prism and using one of my little screwdrivers here little Phillips head I just took this couple of screws on this one here this one's only got one actually and removed that uh, there's the screw you should keep the screws all in one place take that off and then you should see that there's a prism there which is housed here now in, in my example I didn't remove this prism I basically used my lens cleaning tissue okay I soaked it in a bit of glass the uh, anti-fog glass cleaner this stuff is absolutely superb for optical um, things and basically I've got very thin parts of it and using something that won't scratch the prism say for instance like a an old lolly eye stick or something I just gently gently just cleaned either so under the bar here on this side and then on that side using the bar you know little piece of wood on top to just gently ease the cleaner onto the prism both sides and of course I then put a put a piece of um, lens tissue here and I could clean into this prism underneath here into the, the underside of a prism here but this one I removed and um, this one uh, this other one here I was able to clean through that way so the only part I hadn't cleaned on on this one here would have been um, the part that I couldn't get to um, due to the other prism being present so I didn't rip both prisms out I, I just did a, base, a basic clean and that's probably removed about 95% or 90% of the dirt and gunk as I could okay and similarly did the same thing on this side of, of, of the binoculars as well so these have all been cleaned collimating binoculars is always um, a problem because you've got to make sure that both images image from the left and right side do line up okay um, and once you've got your binoculars you know with your eyepieces up to your eyes you've got to make sure that whatever you see through the left and the right is the same in image and you re I use stars to do that at night time because I'm into astronomy and basically that really does fine tune and test any pair of binoculars these binoculars are very basic but however since I've cleaned them up I've noticed I can see possibly um, you know maybe stars wh which are at least you know possibly one t one or even two magnitudes fainter than uh, I could previously and also th the whole of the image is much crisper and I'm starting to see the background um, sort of glow of the Milky Way and things like that which I couldn't see before so that that makes a huge difference for astronomy now with a heavy pair of binoculars what do you do well what I had is an old spotter scope um, made by a company called uh, Bresser and basically this w this came with the, this came with the spotter scope this ring okay which was on the actual spotter scope and you had a little tripod so I basically fitted the ring onto one of the uh, objectives on the binoculars before I put the objective on and then screwed this on through that ring which is a bit fiddly but um, I'm not sort of into cosmetic appearance I'm into function and then I basically clamped the tripod on here underneath and I found that if I set the tripod at an angle, the little tripod handheld at, at an angle, I'll show you when it's all set up, um, it's better for astronomy because it means that the angle of these binoculars holding with two hands means that I can hold this handle here um, in my left hand and the tripod in the right hand gripped two-handed. And can you see the binoculars have already got an angle 
let's say 20, 30 degrees already, which is much better suited for astronomy. You get less of a quick neck because I'm already being um, at that angle. I personally don't want the eye cups on these, and I personally also don't want um, to use the focusing mechanism as such. Although I kept it on, I took the eye cups off. The reason being is because I wanted to be very close up to the eyepieces um, to get a larger field of view. And, and using the glass cleaner, I was able to make sure that my eyepieces themselves were it were as pristine and clean as I could get them um, by taking them apart. As I sh said earlier, you can unscrew. There's two little splits on this ring here, and it will unscrew you gent if you gently um, put a, a small, very small screwdriver. You should be able to open that screw up, and then they'll pop out. A again, you can wear gloves when you do this, and certainly use. Um, you know, tissue, and then put 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 it back in the order in which you cleaned it. Other another similar pair of old binoculars, which I've also fixed uh, 16 by 50s, um, and these ones, they, kept, they actually I bought these second hand. They, they had a particular like a blue sort of coating to them. These ones had one side of it was superb. The optics were very very clean. The other side had been invaded by the uh, you know fungus etc. So I ripped all of the prisms out and this will took them all out these were much much easier to get at than this type here on the left um, I took all of the prisms out using using the glass cleaner uh, and that made it a massive difference again I had to disassemble the focusing and I had to use um, a very small the very small dual screwdriver uh, it's this this one here you need to have a tiny one this is this is because the eyepiece generally with the right eye which has an adjustment so you can have focus with your left eye first and then with the right eye there's a separate focuser because no no two persons eyes will be exactly the same on, on focus um, that's because it's held in place and you need a tiny little screwdriver again tiny little screws don't lose them when you take them out but this has basically brought my astronomy back to life and made it much more fun because I'm getting clarity I don't mind using 16 by 50s as long as you come up with an idea to stabilise it. And I, I find a small tripod using the actual handle on the tripod here as a grip holding the small tripod. So you've got two handed grip on your binoculars and I've, and I've put them at an angle. It's superb for astronomy because basically you're on a winner because already I've got the binoculars at the right angle. Um, I did find the binoculars sort of closed over when I had them this way. So I basically ju then just found a spacer and I just used a spool, an old spool which I trapped at the front of the binoculars and basically like so you just trap it at the front like that and when I closed the binoculars over and turned them upside down it held it at exactly the right distance you know into pupil distance at the back uh, of when I was viewing it and and I did use a normal binocular strap but because it, where I live the weather can be very wild and windy I've used much stronger cord uh, the binocular straps and tied it onto my binoculars and the idea is you need to be out and quick and catch things you know on the run when the sky is clear where I live it can, you can only have five minutes and in particularly in springtime it's very exciting you can see Leo um, Arcturus the star and the uh, Corona Borealis and there's some beautiful stars up there in April but very often cloudy skies still still can be misty and foggy but you catch what you can when you can in astronomy that's where binoculars win-win because you take your telescope out the clouds could come over anyway good luck with your binoculars and I'll post you some pictures I've taken through these binoculars um, using the camera I'm taking the shots with and uh, what other in my case I removed the eye cups from both of them because I wanted to get my eyes even closer to the eye pieces and basically I have put just like a little bit of string to hold the eyepiece and a bit of sticky tape around the side to give it some friction so it's quite a tight fit and the advantage to this is in, in, in binoc using binoculars if you're looking at objects very close you say in the garden these binoculars the close focus was too far away for me to see nature um, and you know small creatures like birds etc and butterflies so what I did is by taking the um, not using the focuser itself the focusing knob was still on but I'm not using it I'm able to move my eyepieces up and uh, at least an extra six or seven millimeters than they could before and that gives me a crucial extra distance that you can use in order to see objects a lot closer to so it gives me much more of a macro 
on these powerful binoculars. So macro on a powerful binocular is very handy, much better for uh, nature spotting than you'd probably use smaller binoculars, but these ones I can now use for nature spotting together with. Okay, it's all assembled now, and you can see there's a spacer which is at the front of the binoculars. That's my perfect interpupil distance, and you've got uh, there's your right eye and your left eye, and it's fairly clean optical path through both, nothing like what it was when I purchased these second hand. They didn't have uh, eye cups uh, or, a, or a case, these binoculars, but I say I've made them um, useful for astronomy and I've set um, this little tripod at an angle so I can, I can, I always wear my neck, you know, the neck strap here which I've made myself quite a long one to keep them safe and then basically I then hold um, the tripod assembly left hand and this handle of the tripod in the right hand and I've set the binoculars at, a, at an angle towards so it's easier to get to the sky and I, I've held the eyepiece um, eyepieces um, with string around the inside of them and they've got some sticky tape uh, inside of them and I'm not using the the, um, eye, the eye relief because these because they're so powerful I need to get my eyes as close as I can to the eyepiece to get as much light into the pupils because the, the actual amount of light going in might only be as much as say 4 millimeters, or maybe more you can have um, binoculars 16 by 50s that can give a field of degree of field of view of four degrees, and these ones I found are much much clearer. As I say, at least possibly, you know, two and a half magnitudes, maybe even more. And I've got no blurring or misting, and I'm able to see faint glow of the Milky Way through them. But you can see some of the pictures I've taken through through the eyepiece. Basically, what I do is put my, this particular camera up to the eyepiece uh, on a tripod and take pictures from uh, this.